Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Unless your family um, is so tired of you, they lock you in the toilet and they're not going to let you out. They put food in here for me. I, I, kept, I keep the food. Uh, we have a, uh, this is a, a dryer. I don't know if you can see it well enough, but it's a dryer that doesn't work. Then my, I keep my food in there and uh, I keep my drink drinks in the bathtub. Um, because, because I love the phrase bathtub gin. Um, have a holly jolly Christmas. It's not really the best time of the year for people who like, um, you know, baseball. Um, and I'd love to make this all about my baseball book, Walk Like a Duck, A Season of Little League Baseball in Italy. But, um, I don't even have the book in here, so I'm not going to be able to do any readings. And I'm also, excuse me, you, you, you ever have... Some people don't need to really get in there and get the snot out. They just they sneeze and they're clean. I remember one one ex-girlfriend, she used to sneeze like a cat. It amazed me, you know, the cat sneeze and it just is atomized. You know, I mean, there, there's no, no trace of it. And, and, you know, a lot seems to come out, but uh, she was like that. I, I, I think, uh, I don't know why we broke up. Um... I mean, I mean, I had no, the only indication I had was, uh, when, when she told me that, um, she found a really good looking guy and, um, I don't know if that was the actual reason, but, um, yeah, she, I, I wish her a Merry Christmas and all, all my ex-girlfriends and all my ex-friends and, uh, uh, Let's say that this is a year, time of the year that we uh, we forgive and forget. Mostly we forget. We hang around with the people we're closest to at the time. Usually it's a family. And uh, in the best of cases, it's a family. And sometimes we're in a position to take people in. I've spent a lot of Christmases away from my family and uh, hung out with people who didn't have family. Some of the best Christmases I ever had, uh, I, was, I was living in... Uh, a place in La Crosse, Wisconsin, with a guy that had no family, and my my family always sent me a box of something, usually a lot of clothes, and um, it was a time in my life I didn't have much, uh, including a job, and I get this big Christmas box, and the guy's name was Lance Browskowski, and, uh, and, and, you know, he didn't need anything, he didn't care, you know, but basically I'd split it half and half with Lance. Lance! Here's another pair of socks. You could use some socks and throw them across the room. Underwear, um, you know, I don't know, shirts and, you know, I, I, I really don't remember just that they were big boxes and it was such a joy to share with Lance Browskowski. He came to hate me. He was a um, schizophrenic and, uh, well, um, I'm not sure how he came to hate me. I talked him out of suicide a couple of times. And that may be the reason. Um, he also, uh, my one of my greatest friends of all time, still alive, Tom Kneifel, um, Gerard in my books. Um, sorry, sorry, Tom, but you had to go. <laughs> um, Tom lived alone. It was in a house that we often lived in. And uh, he lived with uh, Lance and woke up in the middle of the night to hear Lance had, had thrown something or broken something. And, uh, um, and Tom heard him, you know, his bedroom door was shut, but there was no lock and heard Lance going, kill him, kill him, kill him. And then he moved out. Tom did moved into the, uh, uh, former maintenance closet of a office building in downtown La Crosse. And he rented it as an art studio. I had been gone for a couple of years, and I returned to lacrosse with very without a job and no money. I was writing Billy Verite, and uh, um, I moved in with Tom. I paid forty five; he paid thirty because I was the interloper, and uh, that's where I wrote Billy Verite. Uh, there was no heat in that actual room; there was heat in the building, but it could get really cold. I had a uh, uh, the the I had a um, a bed on, there was a stairwell there, and 
so it was a stairwell before a maintenance closet a stairwell turned into a maintenance closet and the um, stairs went down to a landing and then there were no more stairs so I had to climb up to the landing that's where my bed was there was enough room for two of me um, and uh, so it could really come in handy now when I'm writing a book about uh, two of me or more um, the assassination of Olaf Palme uh, Corona Samus that volume one is out volume two uh, got 4,000 plus words in last night but anyway the the stairs going up to the ceiling were filled with tins of atomic biscuits um, from the early 60s. Uh, they, they were, um, this, this had, part of the building, uh, probably the basement, had been a bomb shelter, and this is where they stored the, all the, the biscuits. We opened one once, and the preservatives had preserved uh, every bit of their, their toxicity. And, um, you know, obviously we couldn't eat them, but, uh, uh, we, we were discovered, um, it was illegal to be doing what we were doing. Uh, after about six months after I moved in, we were, we were evicted. Um, then we, we, we still don't know exactly what happened because we were very careful to come out well-dressed, um, during the day, but at night, uh, um, you know, Tom was a drinker. He would never get drunk, and I wasn't drinking at the time, not much. And Tom would drink a 12-pack or so, and he wouldn't get drunk, but, he, you know, he'd be up late. We'd be up late doing all kinds of things. He had a, a, a viola, and uh, he'd play that at night, wandering the halls. And uh, the bathroom for the people on this, for the fourth floor of this building, which is where we were, was on just on the other side of the wall from where Tom slept, and uh, he had made a little bed on the floor. And the, one of the possible reasons we were kicked out is that um, Tom snored. And, uh, you know, you can imagine some lawyer um, coming in to take a leak and, and wondering, what is that sound on the other side of the wall? And it's Tom. <laughs> but at night, we would wash up. We had a... Uh, system the women's bathroom was much nicer than the men's bathroom it was just down the hallways and we would take a, um, a basin made of plastic god plastic uh, and and fill it with water and use a towel and you know d d basically give ourselves a body shower we, we had good warm water and uh, it wasn't a bad life at all I got a uh, um, a full body uh, um, sort of a workman's winter suit from a, a junk dealer I knew. And, um, you know, I had a desk that was at, at the back of this little closet, so the coldest part of the room. And in between, there was this metal um, beam, and it was about right here. And uh, one of the most uh, human and, and joyful things about that, in retrospect only, is the way that, that Tom would laugh when I cracked my skull on that thing. He had done it, of course, himself, and, and never spent any time back there anymore, and that's how I was able to get a desk and a, sort of a writing area back there, uh, when it was warm enough to move my hands. And, and, and I just remember cracking my skull and you're in the most pain you've ever been in in your life, but you realize this is just the human, human uh, clumsiness. And God, he loved it. He loved it so much. It was a, I think it's a kind of, you could call it a Rabelaisian moment. You know, you want to cry. You want to get in on your knees and cry. You're in so much pain. And, and it was also futile. And you know the thing is there. Why do you, you, nobody should ever hit their head twice on the same uh, um, beam, but I, I, I don't know, must have done it five times, and each time, same. You know, when you're down on your knees, you want to cry, but your best friend is cracking up, <laughs> and that's all you could do is laugh. So, uh, Merry Christmas, all people who've ever watched this, and who are watching this, and uh, read lots of books, and, uh, you know, try to eat, and take care of the people around you, and uh, 
let's, you know, I'm coming from a bathroom where I'll be for two days in Slovenia, Isla Slovenia. I'm on the coast, which doesn't do me much good in here. I can't see the water. There's one window here, but too high up to get out. You know, and I'm not good at knots, so I could tie a bunch of towels together and fall to my death. Uh, I don't want to do that. Um, there are a few people would care. Maybe, maybe even 17, maybe more, <laughs> who knows? Uh, life is a mystery and, and, and it's a fun mystery. And as writers, uh, um, I think, I think most writers have to have some, some connection to that sort of mused, it's a, the muses are involved. The muse is is involved in the the, the mystery, um, and the comedy, and the philosophy of life, and uh, um, probably gets a big kick out of the the bullshit that that we come up with, but that's that's fun too. So Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, uh, and uh, um, let's uh, let's uh, do our best to tolerate um, the next few months and uh, be grateful when Trump is out of the news. Um, might have to, he might have to be dead to be out of the news. I'm not advocating uh, making that happen. Um, I want Kissinger to die first. But anyway, my point is just this. Things are going to get better for most people on earth and for, for you white people in wealthy countries, it's been better for you since the day you were born. So give, give that some thought. And, uh, but you know, you're still living creatures. You're just as important as the next possum. So love to y'all.